love that. I know that takes a lot of you guys back. Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, um, I hope everybody's had a great Taco Tuesday because, you know, it's Taco Tuesday and you need to get your tacos on. Um, I made some fish tacos today. Man, they, they hit the spot. You know, you get that, 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 that fish in there and stuff, you know, with all the spices on it. And then you get that pineapple salsa with, with that, that creamy sauce on there. Oh, my God. It, it, was, it, it hit the spot. It hit the spot. And, you know, it was a little healthier than, than some of the things I've been cooking. I'm trying to get myself a little bit, you know, take care of myself because, you know, if I don't take care of me, ain't nobody else going to take care of me. But today, I was sitting here while I was working on cooking dinner and doing some things. I realized something that was really, really interesting, and it didn't hit me. Um, and this is something to take note of for you Eagle fans, too. We've had so many uh, Washington fans, you know, like Johnny Boy and John Mooney and, 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 and Washington fans that lately have been coming out of the woodwork and, you know, going through and telling the Cowboys that we've got an overpaid quarterback you know, that he's overrated, that he stinks, and everything else. And, of course, they have Carson Wentz. Yeah, they have Carson Wentz. But I realized how much Carson Wentz has been disrespected by those in the media. I mean, Seriously. And you're probably like, what do you mean? Well, I mean, you know, of course, uh, yeah, he's been trashed a little bit directly. But indirectly, they really have been insulting the hell out of him. And it, it hit me today because, you know, you, you get when, when you go on YouTube, you get all the videos and stuff by, by what you watched in the past, just things that are going to pop up, or similar content. You know, everything is geared to what you've done in the past. And so <clears throat> I was sitting here. And a video popped up from last year about this time. And it was crazy to me. And, and I want to play this for you because when you think about what they were saying last year about the Washington Commanders and Ryan Fitzpatrick, the love that they were getting, they're not giving any of that love or any of that credibility to Carson Wentz. Let, let's go to the tape here, you know. Uh, and, and shout out to my man Brian. Okay, he, he's got my 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 little piece right up here. I, I love that. I, I love that. But let's go to the tape on this. Bring the group in if I can, Allie, because I want to present this to everyone. And if you listen to my radio show, then you have heard me say multiple times: some team in the NFL is going to sign a quarterback who was much better than anybody realizes. Over the last three years, Ryan Fitzpatrick has a higher completion percentage than Tom Brady, more yards per attempt than Russell Wilson, and a higher QBR than Deshaun Watson. He hasn't been the same Fitzpatrick, Fitzmagic, Fitztragic that he has been through so much of his career. And you put him together with that defense? Ryan Clark, I'm looking right at you. The Washington football team is definitively the team to beat in the NFC East. No ifs, ands, or buts. What do you do? What, change my mind if you want to. <laughs> These are lies you tell, oh, Lord. Greeny. Listen, when you look at this team and you look at Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think we fall in love with him so much because we just enjoy watching him play. And he plays extremely hard. And he was on a team that we thought was tanking for tour, and he actually made them competitive. He starts 4-3 and three last year. But it's still Ryan Fitzpatrick. It's still a guy who doesn't win playoff games. It's still a guy who doesn't have overall winning seasons on a consistent basis. And so I don't necessarily think this puts them above the Dallas Cowboys who now have a new defense with Dan Quinn who will now be better on the back end. They're putting their outside rushers in a better position to succeed and they signed Dak Prescott back with a load of talent on the offensive side of the football and so we had our call. It was 5 a.m. my time and when I knew you were going to make this take, I then had to go into my closet and pick my wardrobe and now do I have on Lululemon joggers? Absolutely, but this is is my Dallas Cowboy V-neck sweater because the Dallas Cowboys will be the front runner for the <laughs> NFC East next year. Booger, tell him why he's wrong. 
<laughs> well, first of all, uh, I, thank you for dropping the Lululemon. People that know about Lululemon know they only go to a certain size. Therefore, I've never shopped in the Lululemon store. So thank you for making that reference, RC. Uh, next, uh, listen, uh, Greeny, you and I are sharing a brain. I think the Washington football team is the best team in the East, and let's break it down. Philadelphia, they stink. Okay, that's number one. We can all out. agree on the that The New York one. Giants, you're going to tell me that a <laughs> team that's breakdown. void of weapons offensively, exactly, a team that's void of weapons offensively, your star running back is coming off an ACL, Daniel Jones turns the football over almost as much as Jameis Winston did, and we know how that ended. I can't uh, talk about the Giants. Now, R.C., you bring up the Dallas Cowboys. You say the Cowboys defense is better. Just because you change the guy calling the plays doesn't mean the players on the field are automatically going to change. That defense was terrible. Oh, by the way, they signed, back, signed Dak Prescott back. Great. Guess what? They were 1-3 last year when Dak Prescott was healthy. So if you look at three, Fitzpatrick joining the Washington football team, I've said this before and I'll say it again. They got the best coach in the division in Ron Rivera. They got the best defense in the division led by that front four and now you bring in Fitz Magic baby yeah he gonna lose you a couple games but he's gonna win you some based on the style of play Greeny you and I as always we are sharing a brain like we do a whole 18 when we get ready to share a transfusion in the clubhouse baby that's it that's exactly right you get two extra shots next time we play together because I'm so happy with that take uh, I don't uh, need David him. Pollack okay what you, that's a good point David Pollack what do you think <laughs> Well, I guess I get to break the tie, kind of, um, or break up the love fest, maybe. But here's the thing. You said, Greeny, clearly better than everybody else, or clearly the favorite. That mm -hmm. I do not agree with. I, I think when you look at Dallas, they're, they're going to score points. They're going to keep they're going to keep them in games with all the weapons. Um, the offensive line can stay healthy, and I, I agree with the defense is going to be a struggle. But if Washington can address a few more needs in free agency, right now I'm not ready to jump on board and say clearly. If they can get help, their, their front four is ridiculous. If they can get some more speed at linebacker and they can get another corner or safety, something to help the secondary, maybe another weapon on offense to go with Fitzpatrick, we'll start having that debate. But clearly, no, it's not clearly. I think it's them in Dallas, and I think you could pick either one. Wow. Okay. You know, so let me see if I get this straight now. So Washington, which won the division the year before. Okay, let's, let's be clear. They won the division the year before at 7-9. and nine. Okay? They went 7-10 and 10 this year. The Eagles were better. Dak Prescott was better, you know, because he was back for the whole season and things like that. But they still have that great defensive line. Chase Young will be coming back at some point. Now, if you are to believe Carson Wentz is as good as guys like Dan Orlowski says, wouldn't they be on the Washington bandwagon saying that Washington now has a legitimate quarterback? You're going to tell me that they had all kinds of love for Ryan Fitzpatrick? and believe that Ryan Fitzpatrick was going to be the savior of Washington, but nobody is on that bandwagon for Carson Wentz? Seriously? Yeah, Carson Wentz definitely gets dissed again. There's no faith in Carson Wentz. And Washington, take note of that. <laughs> That nobody looks and says, oh, thank God, Washington's got Carson Wentz. They're in great shape because they literally went from Ryan Fitzpatrick is less tragic now than he used to be, and with the team he has, he's going to do great. Well, that's all I have to say about that, and um, I'm sure that uh, the Washington Commanders fans will be coming in and coming after me. But I, I'm just trying to put it out there, just trying to get you to slow your roll a little bit and understand what exactly you got out of Carson Wentz. And the reality is, is I hate to say this to you guys, that Carson Wentz will probably make you good enough and competitive enough that you'll win some games. You'll win more maybe than you did last year. But I don't think that he's going to be enough to get you to the playoffs in which case he's going to take you out of that opportunity of getting a quarterback in the draft. But then, you know, again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll, but I am definitely enjoying being out here in the outside studio, and I definitely need to use this more and more. And can't wait to get my 
future co-host in here with us at the uh, same time. But in the meantime, I hope all of you guys are having a great day, as well as you ladies. And with that being said, we're going to get up out of here, and I will see you guys real soon. Just remember, you play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters.